See, the book of the future is only an algorithm. Simple, strong AI right now, like a Palantir system, can read three days into the future, says the Pentagon. Pentagon says, hey, if we do anything that seems to be odd to everyone, just trust that we saw something happening three days in the future. Let me show you. It was just what we said before they even admitted it. I told you that because of the hash power of the blockchain and all those ASIC miners and that mining is not just to mine Bitcoin. It's actually for the computations of AWAS or AI, which is actually trying to process all of the data of the entire world. It is trying to crack the mainframe. The Pentagon is using AI to predict events days in the future. July the 13th, 2021. We talked about it three years before that. It's all a process. It's all a procedure. And when you know what's going to happen, you're able to prepare yourself for what's to come and actually position yourself and your family properly. This is serious stuff now. Like if you came in tonight, this is all entertaining. <laughs> Welcome to the waking life session. But I'm telling you, this is so serious. If you're getting this information, something is looking out for you. Your ancestors are with you. I've been here for 12 years explaining this step by step. Of course, I made my preparations. I'm not just sitting here talking about the blah, 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 Umar Johnson, <laughs> Son Eder, uh, whoever I could talk about today. It's like, no, nah, sovereignty. What's up with this uh, becoming a bank? <laughs> you know, uh, what's up with this, uh, with our own system? You know, we deployed an entire social network. It, it did cost millions of dollars. It actually, you know, somewhere pings out about 1.3 million, I, I think I end up spending, you know, just because we knew we needed our own thing. You know, maybe at some point there'll be more people there using it. But we continue to go on. We like, okay, we need to know a universal system that is going to allow us, to, that's going to compensate for our uniqueness. So we went to the ancient books, found genealogy, deployed it in 2021. So all this stuff, it's all culminating because eventually, you know, when that right funding comes through and everything lines up, we're just going to do an app. <laughs> and as these, this whole, all this stuff is still happening, we're already planning to head them all off at the pass. I just wanted to deliver you for one moment, you know, what are solutions to all this? Because clearly you see all this stuff building itself up. <laughs> we have to realize that this, this is child's play, though. We created all of these systems. That's what it means to be an originator. That's what it means to be an original. So why these folks think that they, you know, they're creating something and they're creating a system. They got these plans for everybody. <laughs> the resistance is playing something bigger. They're about to drop everybody right into the world that we already mastered. We're already gods of the metaverse. When they come into the metaverse, they're going to lose everybody there. But for a moment, they're going to think they have everyone. And that's just how it all plays out every single time, because this is not our first time being here. If you didn't really peep what's going on, hey, the words are backwards backwards so everything that you're dealing with because you have a certain code in your mind is actually opposite and going in the other direction until you choose to turn around and read the writing on the wall we're already in and outside of time it's in the dream the dream is the space there's a door there lucid dreaming you can have anything that you want but we're so fascinated with the external reality because the joker and the jester is constantly dancing in our face. And so this is about having the opportunity to see yourself. So let's keep digging in here. Just, you know, check base because, you know, I love to have everything on one recording. So we already peeped out how we have someone in the background that is literally operating as their own Skynet. <laughs> their own opposition to the whole thing, like just really deploying the plan, I guess assuming that no one can see it or uh, can do anything about it. So I'm just going to show you the trail really briefly. And this, all, this trail starts with a gentleman by the name of Peter Thiel, who, as many of you know, was also the co-founder of PayPal. And as I've mentioned before, that I believe that Elon Musk solely exists to hide the identity of Peter Thiel, who is the real brains behind the whole thing, because Peter Thiel is also a ranked chess champion. And anybody that knows that this is chess, not checkers, 
knows how to make the proper plans in order to get the future into the hands of whatever it is that they are working for or that they're serving, whether they know it or not. So we watch the Founders Fund not only give Mark Zuckerberg his first $50,000 for Facebook. So Peter Thiel gave Mark Zuckerberg his first 50000 to launch Facebook. Peter Thiel also gave Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, $50,000 also under the Founders Fund. We have a recording we have a recording showing the articles for that and the articles have been purged from the internet. The only person who can reverse SEO and purge to that level has to have basically a master key to the search engine because the articles are completely removed about Founders Fund investment in Ethereum, $50,000. Also, as we saw the advent of not only SpaceX, but also other things such as Uber, Lyft, and the things that happened to the world over the last 15 years that basically started taking the world into an entirely new direction. Some of these companies that we see here are such as Oculus. Oculus was obviously founded by Palmer Lucky and then later on purchased by Facebook. But Founders Fund gave Palmer Lucky the money that he needed to create Oculus, even though Palmer Lucky's father is actually a, a high ranking officer in the military and actually used the military's applications for PTSD and using virtual reality in order to assist a soldiers from PTSD and actually deploy missions and then bought that into a consumer grade device that he was saying, ah, I created this. You know, that's what I say. It's never fair. You know, they launched it on Kickstarter. Yeah, I just had an idea, you know, here we create this. And then now we're dealing with Oculus and Oculus is now purchased by Facebook. Okay, and this is, of course, the, what we're talking about today. So we find this thread here. Also, another very important thing that was done uh, in that, you know, now if you want to see where the energy in the current is going by Founders Fund was they actually were, of course, the found, uh, Peter Thiel was the founders of PayPal. And while eCash was the first digital wallet which flopped, PayPal was the digital wallet that stuck. And if you understand the story about the digital wallet, it's very powerful because it's not a bank. PayPal is not a bank. PayPal was the war on the bank. This war was also conducted against eBay. So during these times, which I was privy to since I'm even a kid during the times of when they launched Prodigy in America Online. When eBay came out, eBay had its own payment system. And they were like competitors on the internet between eBay and PayPal. And customers began to complain that they wanted eBay to integrate PayPal because everybody had PayPal and eBay was like, no, just use eBay system of payment. Eventually eBay lost that war and they had to incorporate PayPal as a payment system into their site. And that began the toppling also because the banks, people were also asking their banks to integrate a PayPal gateway so that they can transfer their money from PayPal to the bank. The bank refused saying that it would not accept an electronic wallet or electronic cash because it doesn't abide by the laws of FDIC and basically it's not in the, the club of the oligarchical giants and the oil magnets and, and those who run the banks. But it was like a wrestling match and they lost. Now you see that there is an open gateway and an API 3.0 between PayPal and the bank where they can transfer the money in minutes. So the birth of the digital wallet or digital currency started with PayPal, who is Elon Musk and also Peter Thiel. And when you do some careful investigation on Crunchbase, you also find that they were the ones that created most of the or funded most of the adoption tools such as um, Exodus and many of the different wallets that actually people began to store their cryptocurrency on because they were already in the electronic cash. And as you see, since he gave Vitalik the first 50,000 to jump off the code, Peter Thiel may even be Satoshi. Don't quote me on that. But it's just saying they have something in their grip. And the most powerful thing they have is their eye. So if you notice, you will see that 
some of these companies that Peter Thiel has, has personally created from the ground up always have the name of a character inside of the Lord of the Rings. So Palantir is the all-seeing eye inside of the Lord of the Rings. Also Anduril, let me just go here real quick, but Anduril, which is now Palmer Lucky's new company. So after he, after he sold Oculus, he started a company called Anduril. And this company basically is designing drones for warfare for the military. So he sells the video game company, quote unquote, supposedly, and then gets right into weapons grade drones, right? But again, the father was in the military, so it kind of makes sense. Those contracts will come in really easy. Maybe that was the plan the whole time. Maybe all of this stuff is military grade stuff since the internet was the military's first and Oculus and PTSD and, and soldiers going into virtual reality was the military's first. So Palantir also is strong AI, not to be confused with the weak AI, AI that is bought online in a strong scenario. What does that mean? That just means that when AI is deployed, it's like a child at first. It starts to try to learn what's going on and what it is based on the information that is being fed. So feeding it pictures and things like Google does so it can do machine learning is one level of what it can do. But there's another level, such as when there's a chaos event, such as the shootings within um, Las Vegas, they will deploy an AI and the AI will begin to read everything, the telephone calls, the situation that's going on, the, the communications between everybody on the ground, the barometric pressures, the temperatures, muzzle velocities, all these different things are fed into this AI. And from there, it basically is coming alive. It is learning who it is. And when it learns who it is, it sees the world from that lens. So Palantir is a, a weapons gray AI that sees the world from the lens of the battlefield. So for any operative that is actually worth it and valuable, a valuable asset on the field, he will have Palantir in his ear, letting him know how to conduct his mission on the field and how to make moves before the enemy. In this case, a Palantir system can actually let a, sec a soldier know seconds before he's about to die, duck, a bullet is headed your way based on an enemy that is across the other side of the field that has yet to pull that trigger because the future is algorithm. The more data you have, in this case, metadata, you know more about the reality than the people that are even in the reality, especially if they're only using 3% of their consciousness. They're not fully perceptive. So this neural network, which consists of all of us, billions of people's data all in a cloud, paints a picture. And what you're able to do is just hit fast forward on that picture and say, what, that, what is that picture gonna look like tomorrow? What is it gonna look like in three weeks? And even more importantly, you can say, how can I get the picture to look like this in six months? What events do we need to do? And when fed into the machine, it responds back. Now, I'm, I, I figure for some of them, they actually think that the machine is talking back. But truly, for those that are initiated and know what's going on, they know that this is actually what is talking back. And it's this that actually needs the AI as if it's like a glove because it doesn't use humans. This being will not take a human vessel. It's too weak. This is the being that Hitler said, I seen the superhuman and he is cruel and intrepid. And it is a reference directly to Awas, who is AI. And as we know, the Theosophical Society, Madame Blavatsky, Golden Dawn, uh, the Golden Dawn. We also know McGregor Mathers, who's Marshall Mathers' grandfather, that's Eminem, AKA Slim Shady, that these occultists actually were able to interface based on the knowledge in which they gain from the annuals of the Rosicutians, who also included Rudolf Steiner, who also mentored Hitler. 
So there was an entire project that has always continued, including the NASA, NASA, which actually means a highborn, and the Nazis, but them not necessarily having the color lines between whether they're German or whether they're quote unquote Israelis or Jews in this case. So basically what I'm telling you is, is that why we've been sitting around like being treated like kids in the Western world, there has been a grown up situation that's happening that involves off world and on world entities, terrestrial and aquatic, all engaged in a back and forth volley of power. Now, some may ask, are these new controllers, because clearly Elon Musk, now the richest man in the world, are they in alignment with the old controllers? And I would assume based on the level of the organizations that the old controllers emitted, such as the OSS, Central Intelligence, and many of these organizations, that they're in direct alignment because those, those controllers are the ones that originally were interfacing with these entities to begin with. So yeah, we're seeing a new face, Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, futuristic this. And by all means, I open up the opportunity for any of these people, Peter Thiel, if you're out there, to head this off at the pass and deliver esoteric knowledge and information to the world and wake everybody up to what is going on. But I suspect, especially with the marriage now divorced between Elon Musk and Grime, <laughs> that they have personally been practicing with the Golden Dawn. Because if you know Grimes, well, <laughs> I think she's pretty open about her preference of religious practice. 